emerging markets are in focus as a new decade begins in just two days. Well, over the past 10 years, the iShares MSCI Emerging Markets ETF has only gained 7%. Now, to put this in perspective, the S&P 500, on the other hand, has nearly tripled over that same exact time frame. Well, joining us now to discuss is George C. He's CEO of Annandale Capital. And George, when you take a look at the underperformance of emerging markets relative to the S&P 500, are things about to change, do you think? Well, there's a good chance that that's going to happen. You, you have reversion to the mean is one of the only truisms and in investments that over a long period of time works almost every single time. And emerging markets have been a lagger for so long, it's time for them to catch up. I think the only concern I have in terms of that thesis is that um, emerging markets have, have gotten more and more correlated to the U.S. markets over the years. So if the U.S. markets hit a soggy patch, I'm not sure they can decouple and, and go up while the U.S. markets uh, f uh, kind of stagnate. And I think it's going to be harder for the U.S. markets to continue their momentum in the next five years. We may get a good year this year because historically it's been proven that if you have a great year like 2019, the next year is usually good, too. But we'll see. We're certainly betting in our firm that emerging markets is a good place to put capital currently. And but George, let's talk a little bit about uh, more about the U.S. market. You're saying the expectations for 2020 to keep them low. When we talk about the potential return for the U.S. markets going forward, how do you see that playing out over the next 12 months? I think we're likely to, with all the posturing in front of the presidential election and interest rates still so low and no real competition for public stocks outside of big geopolitical uh, conflagration or some other big issue that, that disrupts confidence in the markets that we're likely to have a pretty good year this year. But I, I think that investors would be well served in keeping their expectations moderate, as you mentioned, Shauna, because I think if you're expecting another big year, you're likely to be disappointed. I think a positive year would be a win. Uh, so where are you putting, uh, how are you allocating your portfolio then heading into 2020 if we have tempered expectations, likely won't get the same sort of repeat year that we had in 2019? We do a lot in the private market, so we're doing quite a bit of private equity and real estate, and oil and gas. In the public markets, we're really emphasizing energy and healthcare and some of the sectors that have lagged this year. It's kind of the same thesis as emerging markets that the worm's got to turn, so to speak, at some point. And we don't want to bet on Apple and Facebook and Microsoft going up 50 percent again this year. They're going to have a hard time giving really positive returns, whereas there's a lot of, of companies out there that have been left behind for so long, they don't have to do much to, to perform well. So we're trying to emphasize areas that are that are unloved right now, and we think that's going to change in 2020. George, one sector that has been unloved now for just around 10 years is energy. That sector has been a huge underperformer. Do you think that's about to change? I do. I don't know how sustainable that is, but I do know that, for instance, in midstream companies, their balance sheets have been completely redone. They're cheap. They have incredibly high yields. For someone who's going to earn less than 2% on a 10-year Treasury note to be able to get anywhere from 5 to 10% just on the dividends from midstream companies with very low valuations, the odds are strongly in your favor. So I think that investors would be well served to at least overemphasize energy. And it, it's not hard to do when it's only 4% of the S&P at this point. It's such a small part of the S&P that you, you can you can outweigh it and still only have a six to eight percent position, so you're not too overweight and, and betting instead of investing. All right, George C. Thanks for joining me. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.